I'm Sarah at Halftone, and today we'll be going over the basics of UX Pin. I made this comparison sheet between Adobe XD, Figma, UX Pin, and Sketch. But there might be new features that I'm not aware of, or features that are like cloudy in my brain right now. Um, in comparison to the programs that we've used, it's superior primarily in prototyping. Um, but there are other features that I've really enjoyed using in UX Pin, and that the main things that stand out is the documentation aspect of UX Pin, which is essentially like a design system PDF that you would get from a company explaining how to use their brand. Um, basically, you're able to bring in all of the colors and typography from your file along with assets and components and you're able to include like comments and descriptions for each of the sections on the page and you're also able to see the accessibility colors on the colors side of things so like which colors are okay with black text and which colors are okay with white text on top of it which is really nice and for typography so these were all implemented within the document that i showed you guys earlier that said hello okay going back to the file um one thing to note about ux pin i really enjoy figma's use of like a project dashboard where you can group projects into one bigger like big folder of sorts and UX pin also allows that. And so I ha that's why I have the project dashboard marked for Figma and UX pin. Because for Adobe and Sketch, it's more like um, your regular like file window um, of like recent recently viewed files and stuff. We have the asset, the assets versus layers panel, which you can toggle here. So this is the assets section and this is the pages section. And Adobe has a very similar structure for that. But UX Pin also includes an accessibility panel. So instead of importing a plugin like Stark, all of all of the accessibility um, tools are already natively in UX Pin, and that also attests to the fact that UX Pin puts priority on accessibility, especially with the design system documentation, as you saw with the colors. With the overall UX Pin interface. There's a lot of customization to it. Like you can expand your pages, you can collapse them, you can pull out this entire, you can like pull out everything into one big view of all of the pages. Like you can see that I have a prototyping comparison page and a basic comparison page and then our little intro. And you can also pop out panels and like drag them around. So that's really nice. And then you can switch it from one side to the other depending on how you like your interface. There are like three things that I really have been hesitant on about UX Pin, and that is their one canvas. Con like they, all of the pages that you have and the artboards that you have are on separate pages. So like if I wanted to duplicate this page, you would have to, or like duplicate this artboard, you would have to duplicate the page. They don't have an artboard system like Sketch, Figma, and Adobe do. Um, they also don't have a components page. And I know Figma and XD don't have component pages either, but you're able to create separate pages for those components. And then Sketch, it just automatically goes to that page as soon as you make a master component. Um, so UX pin not having a components page is kind of an issue for me, especially because I've had difficulties creating component variants. So if I have a master component, the only way to modify it is to break the component and make an entirely new one. So like if I wanted to change the color, I would have to break the component and make a new one to like change the color. Every page has its own documentation page for comments and stuff. So I made this quick little comment section on this page in particular and noted where things annoyed me. You can see them highlighted and like footnoted. Is there is there like a prototyping um, tab also? Like how would you get to that? Prototyping is it's just the interaction section and so in order to like gotcha. 
activate that, you have to have an object selected. Yeah. So yeah. I okay. have, yep. Yeah. Yeah, because I, from what I understand about UX pin, it's primarily used for prototyping, not necessarily creating things in it, but it does have the capabilities to create things in it. Um, in your libraries panel, they have a bootstrap iOS and material design design system already available. So you can like access the iOS library here. UX pin is unique in comparison to the others because it has the ability to use variables and um, conditions. And so variables essentially lets you make form fields usable in the prototype. So if you have like a form field, like fill in your name here, you can share links to prototypes. And from that prototype, people are able to like type in their name and then hit enter or whatever. And then it goes to the next page. Or if you want to implement conditions, if they fill in their name wrong, I don't know how you could, um, it will come up with like an error, error state. It'll say, hey, you filled in this wrong, try again. I think that's the majority of the basics. Yeah, that's all, that's all I've got, folks. 